a report of a field trip. So my name is Klaus Schleisig. Uh, I'm uh, continually uh, and almost exclusively uh, programming in FOSS since 1981. So that's quite a while, 40 years. Uh, and along the way, uh, I was the primary implementer of Volksforce uh, in the 1980s. This was quite popular. Um, and later on, I designed my own force processor called Microcore. Okay, so and now uh, that I'm of the age I am, um, I'm looking at, well, what do I do with Microforce? Because I have been working on this for 20, 20 plus years. And up to now, nobody really picked it up. Uh, and as Chuck once said, it is not sufficient to invent the best mousetrap. No, you also have to pay the way to your doorsteps. Uh, otherwise, people won't knock the door to get it. Uh, and so... I thought, uh, well, perhaps I go to the academic world and uh, namely to why can't I uh, show the next screen? I have no idea why this doesn't work. No matter what I do on my buttons, um, I have to start this again. Okay, the event, the 38th workshop, so also the 38th, interestingly, uh, of the Programming Languages and Computation Concepts section of Gesellschaft für Informatik. So that is in Germany as academic as you can possibly be. Um, Anton is, uh, and, and Ulrich also know this group. And uh, so I went there on a field trip. And it, it became clear to me that at present, type checking is the pick that is chased through, through the computer science village. And uh, at first I thought, well, why type checking? What a waste of energy. But then it became clear to me that type checking implies an automatic stack checker for force. And now I am all for type checking as long as somebody else does the work for the stack checker. I want the stack checker. Um, and it's interestingly enough, one presentation uh, dealt with the design of an extensible language and the so chosen implementation strategy was very complex. So this is a one person usable tool, but I don't see how you can teach it. Um, But I found a new trend is emerging. It's, that is being discussed internationally by maybe a small but a, a significant uh, group of uh, computer science people um, that deal with that seems to be a growing discontent of the conventional compiling strategies that use as it is called phrase structure grammar, and that is characterized by the Bacchus Nauer form specifications. Instead, a so-called dependency grammar, dependency grammar, as I understand it, has its name from, because one word in the source code stream depends on the previous ones, perhaps based on a dictionary or lexicon is considered to be the more flexible approach. Um, that 
sounds very falsy to me. And it has been shown already that both phase structure grammar and dependency grammar cover the same set of linguistic constructs, namely context-free grammars. And the uh, scheme for prolog, small talk, APL, and bliss are examples of dependency grammar systems. And CHTTPS uh, and so on and so on. This link uh, uh, leads you to a paper that discusses these differences and how the author developed uh, dependency grammar uh, was uh, for his Langram, as he calls his favorite uh, language to come into existence. And he defined the following open issues in, in his Langram project. Uh, first is user defined data structures. We know to do this, how to do this in force with create does. Um, he wanted nested lexicons and introducing scope. Uh, we know how to do this with vocabulary trees. Um, handling ambiguity. We know how to do this with uh, having the same name in different vocabularies and the redefinition of words. Um, he wants dynamic binding. Uh, we have evaluate in force. And uh, he wants, and that seems to be very much on demand, especially of, of by, by young students, uh, higher order words, as he calls it. And I found that this is also discussed uh, in, in computer science circles as metaprogramming. And we have the immediate bit there. And that's all we need to do this. So for force, all these open issues are not open issues. So it seems to me it is worthwhile to relate the force concepts to the scientific community. Uh, so academia and force, um, and what became absolutely clear to me is the academic world does not know about the simplicity of the force approach. I mean, it does know about the force approach in the first place, but it's, and, and because it doesn't know about it, it doesn't know how simple it is or it can be. And therefore, next year, I'm going to hold a presentation um, with the title, Poor Men's Compilers, How Force Treats Its Source Code. Um, and I, I, I consciously choose the word compilers because in force we don't have one compiler. We have several small ones that interact with each other. Uh, conclusion. Uh, the academic computer science and the force communities use different te terminology. This is terrible. And, but the result is that we don't understand each other and we can't talk with each other. And so I think um, the only way out of this is we have to learn their terminology, ter terminology in order to be understood and to promote force in the academic world, or else it's not going to fly. And to this end, um, Ulrich Hoffmann and Philipp Zembold and uh, Carsten Strothmann and uh, myself, we decided that we will re-engineer Volksforce to serve as a model for a system in order to understand how it works. And the re-engineering is, is necessary for two reasons. One, we want to bring it up to the current standard. And secondly, we may probably be able to throw out uh, several things that not, are not really necessary to understand the system, which are only nice to have, but not essential. I think that's it. Yes, that's it. That was my talk. Thank you. First question by Clean Faulkner. Um. Yeah, more an observation than a than a question, really. But uh, I've seen this terminology problem. I've seen in the functional programming world as well. Uh, that Haskell, in particular, um, when it was a younger language, had a 
had a significant problem with, so for example, the word return in Haskell means something completely different to what it means to every other programmer. Uh, it's about kind of lifting data structures into monads in Haskell and everywhere else it returns a value from a, from a function. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if, I'm wondering what we could learn from the, from the functional programming world. Uh, about how to, um, because it's it's things like Scala and F Sharp that have brought um, functional programming to wider attention, and not the kind of hardcore, deep magic like Haskell. Um, and um, yeah, I, I'm wondering what we could learn from that. Any comment from Klaus on that? No, no. I, okay, I, I, in that case, I'll, I'll continue with my uh, comment. Uh, you said something about um, uh, stack step checking, and actually, at last year's um, Euro 4, I presented the stack step checker, so you, I, I haven't yet. Uh, 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 hold on. Anton, I'm not talking about a stack depth checker. I'm talking about a type checker on the stack, a stack type checker. Okay. Oh, because you said if you have a type checker, we can also have a stack checker. But yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, we need a stack that, checker as a precondition to have yes, a type no. checker. I, that that will be another another paper then. Uh, okay. Uh, the other thing is uh, you had this uh, slide which said, yeah, uh, they talk about this and we do it in four like this. And uh, my impression was that it's uh, that's something um, we see a lot also in the other direction. Uh, people hear something and think they know what they what the other side is talking about and try to map it on what they know but i'm not sure if if it's actually correct in particular for the higher level words or high level stuff uh, i think what they are talking about is not what um, um what immediate is doing um, and i mean you can do uh um, meta programming with immediate and you can do it with high level words but um, you cannot do everything that high level words do uh, with immediate at least not easily yeah but then what is meant by high level words <laughs> well that's of course the thing you have to learn first no um but uh, it's um, what I suspect I, I, I wasn't there, so I, I cannot uh, tell you what they meant. But my uh, what I expect is it's words that um, that take XTs and so in, in fourth terms, take XTs, execute them uh, and, and so on. And when, when you do the right words and you can compose them in various interesting ways. So basically, what what Bob Armstrong uh, said about applying operators to every element of a matrix, for instance. That's one. Yeah, that's one higher level word. Yes. Or I, I think we, what what Troy is, uh, has been doing with it, it uses higher level words for control structures and and so on. Yes. One, one comment I'd, I'd uh, like to make is is one thing I see making all your objects be just one cell on the stack. Um, and notice that, that, that the first cell in a Kofi header is the type. And, and, so, and, and type zero is a general list, a list of lists. Um, so um, I think that it, it really is very, well, that's the way that, that, that the first thing you want to know is what the hell it is that you're dealing with. And from there, you can go and make um, all the sort of stuff that is in factor and so forth. Uh, um, you, and the, the, the um, what a genericization of words and all of that. 
but but type really ends up being then just do a fetch check the type and, and and then you you know the vocabulary to apply to it okay, okay. next question and, and andrew raised his hand yes andrew please uh, you have to unmute yourself. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Klaus, thanks very much for that talk. I am very curious about Volksforth, having heard so much about it. And my question is this. You are, I think, as I understood, developing Volksforth as a model for, for communicating um, with these computer scientists and, and more generally. Now, a model forth is not the same as a standard forth. So I'm curious that what is your kind of ingoing hypothesis which parts of standard, the standard, the ANSI standard, are you going to throw away in order to make the model forth um, as best a model as it can be um, of your intentions? Yeah, by model forth, I mean it, it just covers the basic needs of the force system. Uh, I don't know how come, I think it can be complete as far as the standard is concerned. Um, but it is not optimized neither for speed nor for space. So being Volksforce without a lot of re-engineering, it will remain a 16-bit system with a limited 64K address space. But in order to understand how force works, this is not important. You do not want to do applications with it. Um, it is not so that it has been developed as a model, but in the 1980s, uh, this was a state of the art force with uh, several additions to, to kind of come to grips with the 64K limitation. And these, for instance, can all go. So, Peter next. I just wanted to uh, reaffirm what Anton was saying about higher order definitions. I think in traditional computer science terminology, a higher order definition is one that takes other methods and invokes them, just as we do with XTs and execute. 